This is the Evening Experience on Nigeria's first and only radio station for women and their families. My name is Anthony Dalmelda. Tonight on the Evening Experience, we're discussing the Lagos Sogun State Interstate Ban and, of course, we focus on the corruption on our roads. Not to forget, once again, I stated that on April 27, President Muhammadu Buhari, you know, during his third nationwide broadcast on measures taken by the government to curb the spread of the virus, you know, he announced the ban on non-essential interstate travels. However, you know, he also announced a gradual easing of this lockdown from the 4th of May based on the recommendations of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. But as it is now, our president may not have realized that his directive would cause, you know, an extortion spree from security personnel, state government officials, and non-state actors across the country. Now we're looking at how can this be, you know, sorted. It, we've, we've, seen quite a no, we've seen quite a number of, um, you know, quite a lot of grippling uh, gridlocks on our roads because as a result of this, uh, you know, these uh, bribery, this corruption going on on the roads because of, uh, say, 2,000 naira, because of 5,000 naira, because of name it. We've seen quite a number of these. You know, uh, as I stated, we saw someone who sent uh, certain videos and clips saying that, okay, now we've seen our police officers collecting quite a no an, you know, an amount of money from commuters, from commercial vehicles, and they divert, you know, to an open space on both sides of the road, collecting bribes just in order to, you know, give access to these commuters. No vehicle is turned back, you know, for crossing interstate, but allowed to pass through after paying a police token. We have quite a number of callers who said, okay, our police officers have made these roads their offices. Why? Because, in fact, we have most quite a number of them who are not assigned, you know, to work, I mean, assigned to these roads, but yet for, you know, their own illicit gains, for their own illicit benefits, they go out there causing gridlocks, not even, you know, putting their concern to the fact that we have quite a number of Nigerians, of commuters, you know, um, stranded as well, going to their offices and trying to beat time. But now this is the situation. The, the ban, once again, please not to forget, the reason, you know, for the ban has to do with the fact that we're trying to caution the effect of the coronavirus pandemic. But so far, so far, as I stated, we have at the moment 13,464 confirmed cases of coronavirus in Nigeria. Active cases are at 8,800. Yet, we, uh, I doubt we've, we've seen any effect, you know, of this ban, this imposed ban, you know, on interstate travel, travels on commuters. What then is the way forward? We cannot definitely continue like this. So, hence, we will continue to ensure that the appropriate quarters get to hear this and ensure that the needful is done. This is one of the lingering crises that we've facing on this part of the, of the, of the state. You see, I have, I have experienced a whole lot about this issue of um, police stopping the vehicles. First of all, what you mentioned earlier was okay. The, 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 the idea behind the whole thing is to cushion the effect of the spread. Exactly. As I speak to you up today, the spread is still increasing. Just yesterday, we had about 300 cases alone in a day. So tell me, is the, is the, is the, is the idea of, of, of controlling the entire system is not being defeated yet? Secondly, the police guys at the, at the OPIC end of Lagos Ibadan Expressway, but at best, this one part of, one part of them says they are from Lagos, the other part says they are from Mogu State, and all these things is not helping the commuters coming in from Mogu State to work in Lagos. You know, what I've said, things don't need to be done right. Oh, but is that a way to do things? But so they go to go to long bridge in the morning and see the level of of, of gridlocks. Exactly. Mm. Gridlocks. This will be there from morning to night. I'm very sure if you get to if you get to the expert right now, you see traffic at this time of the day. I mean, this is not a way to live life. There are authorities, there, there are concerned authorities who know what to do, but they will not do it. Whoever is concerned, whoever is the police commissioner that is concerned for to to to, to, to take care of this issue, whoever is the 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 the, the federal issue, the federal, federal uh, what do you call the federal supervisors of the of the of the road, whatever, should go there and do that job. How could you suffer like this on the road? Don't do that. Don't, they, don't, that is like an office to them that they're making money. Mm, mm, mm. So like an office to them. Mm. Like an office to them. They don't they're making money. Something like they are doing. I just talking. I don't think that anybody has a stop for entering the country before. Mm. Okay. You know the talk of people that I say the claim is kind of a loop. If they get to that junction, they say, "You drop the passengers and move," and the passengers will come to the front and enter the vehicle back again, and they take all their money. 
their, their passengers alight and they they move on further then the passengers get into the bus is that what he just stated the bus again mm. and the continues. so who, who are they talking nobody all right thank you so much mark thank you so much for sharing this let me take this call real quick hello good evening to you hello good evening this is so talking about those people at the end of opic most of those guys there they are not even on duty some of them are just there for escort purpose to make money nothing and they are causing a lot of traffic at any time of the day even though you go there the only time you are free to go is around five is five thirty any other time after, after that then you just be there, you get your office late. Some people, they have just been fired from their office just because of that place. We just think our government should do something and let those guys. Most of them are not on duty. They are not even posted there at all. They are just there to be an escort or collect money for nothing. Say, please, government should do something about it. Well, for me, we all know, we are aware that the Nigeria police force is you know, uh, full of corruption than bribery. Everybody knows that the police is not supposed to uh, be uh, an agency where you have the, uh, the policemen on the road collecting money, collecting bribes from people for whatever reason. You know? So everybody knows this. The president knows, the IG knows, USCC knows, ICCC knows. So we are just living like uh, people who are, who are not civilized, actually, you understand? So I think uh, we, we have a problem in this country. So before COVID-19, Nigeria was already in the mess. I realize that the country has actually made the Lagos state and Oko and few other states to be the point of places for almost all the uh, people living in the country to work. Hmm. This okay. is when you are living in a country where things are not being splitted. This is all you get. I happen to be one of the agencies that will that, that can that can arrest people. Do you get on that road? Okay, so okay. In, in one in in thirty minutes you can get over one hundred thousand people. Do you want to arrest all these people? We don't get um, the, the people to pay you, but you just look at the situation of things. The police are doing some job. There are other agencies that are doing some job, but other agencies are not collecting money. But the truth is, in one hour, I tell you, you can have over 100,000 people that you have to arrest. So how do I want to handle this? The government needs to do something. I don't know. It's cumbersome. It's just too complex. That if you even ask the police to arrest in one hour, the whole of the station mm. will be filled up. There mm. will not be a place There will be no space. And another thing, mm. people are not civilized. Let me tell you, you still have people that don't even cover their nose. You tell them, oh, come on, do this. It's for your own good. You are not paying government to, to keep yourself healthy. But they will still tell you, we want to look for what we want to eat. Do you understand? I don't know maybe the, the media needs to do, to do more awareness. I don't know if the government has really rendered people useless or the poverty is causing this. I don't know. It's too complex. Do you get me? I think that's my contribution. A lot of people that work in Lagos, they say in our way to Moe Iba. Mm. Mm. Okay. So the people that stay here, they actually work in Lagos. So when you say you're banning the interstate movement, what it means that these people, how do they go to work? Initially, it looks like it was working because there was banned. But when government lifted the ban and said, okay, people should start going to work, that's when we started having this problem. Hmm. Because a lot of people would troop up, troop up in the morning to go to work. In the morning to, and okay. And not to go to work. Mm -hmm. Because they have to go to work to make their living. So what I think is that government should look at it critically. You know, every situation has a special way you handle it. They should have looked at this uh, uh, legacy by the expression. If they want to say, okay, no, no movement from a uh, vehicle coming from Ibado or uh, Ibado and other parts of the city, mm, okay. try to shift it after Mowe. You know, you put the uh, the check, police checkpoint there after Mowe because you know after Mowe, most people that are coming into Lagos don't stay after Mowe. That's what they should have done. So that people staying in our for Ibado for Mowe and uh, actually they can go to work easily. WFM 91.7